The Love Golf Tour presents the year-long match play. From the preserve of the Oak Meadows is a match featuring Kirk and Mitch in the final four to advance to the finals of the year-long match play in the Love Golf Tour. We pick up the action at Oak Meadows on the first hole with Mitchell, who has the honor. Going with an iron. Straight away, par four. Just one bunker protecting the fairway. Very long green. Mitch decided to go with just this three iron. And he hits a hard draw. Many trees on this hole. There's just about four or five holes on the whole property that feature a lot of trees. This is one of them. It's one of the original holes, I guess, in a country club. It used to be built on the same property. Kirk is going aggressive here. Despite Mitch being in trouble, he's going to go with driver. Kirk was able to sink a 40-footer on one and win that hole outright. When we go to the second hole. Mitch went for a layup and he went through the hazard. Kirk made a birdie. He reached there in two with two fairway woods. As we move to the fourth hole, Kirk also won the third hole, so he is three up through three. And we are blocked here by a fellow Love Golf Tour member, Jimbo. You see, that's a trend throughout the day. He likes staying in front of cameras. He also likes having his phone ring, but that's either here or there. Anyway, so Kirk is three up here going into the fourth hole. It's a good drive. He just took a three wood there from this 320 yard par four trying to drive this green with a three wood. The angle takes it off a bit. It's only about 260 to the front. Mitch going with a three iron driver is probably too much club for him. And he just rips one. Be up by the green. This nice high draw went right towards the green. And it looks like Kirk is going to be away. And here's another Jimbo antic. Puts his push cart right in front of Kirk's shot. He's about to hit. You can't yeah. see from his camera angle. Kirk not all that happy. Laughing it off a little bit. He went ahead and hit it to about four feet. He had a great flop shot up there to about four feet. Mitch hit his chip shot to the back of the green. So Kirk ended up with this putt to go four up through four. Heartbreak. Coming out on fire if he could do this. And he just misses it. He was good to two under through the first four holes. Going par, birdie, par. That would have been another birdie. He's a door open for Mitch to stay three down. So Kirk is three up through four. Sixth hole, fifth hole, Mitch won with a getting a stroke. They both players parred, but Mitch did get a stroke on five. Kirk missed about an eight footer for Birdie. Would have been his last two putts, could have been three under through five, but he missed both of them. And Mitch, instead of being four down, is two down. And he capitalizes here on the sixth hole. It's a 370 yard par four. And Mitch just wild this drive. He follows this tree line. When we got up there later, we noticed that the ground was very firm between the trees and the fairway. He just got a great bounce all the way down by the green, a 320, 330 yard drive. Kirk that does not know that that ball rolled all the way down by the green. Not really 
put try to put it in play here. Just lost the hole. Think he needs to get one back. He's giving a shot on this hole as well. And that ball actually ended up well to the right. Mitch was able to pitch on it. Two putt for a par net birdie. Go to uh, go to one down. Mitch also took the seventh hole as Kirk hit a tree on his second shot, not his drive on his second shot, and then lost it. Could not find his ball. Players have the eighth hole. We arrive here. The ninth hole is perhaps the most difficult hole on the course. These guys are not playing from the tips, but this hole is still 440 yards from the second of the back tee. Mitchell does not have room to hit his driver. His next longest club in the bag is a three iron, and he actually, you can see the leaves falling from that tree. He just clipped that tree, folks, and hopefully he carried the marsh. Kirk has a five wood. The problem here is the fairway gets very narrow at about 260 yards, so you could really have to try to stripe a 240, 260 yard shot and then just hit a long approach shot in. And this ball is nailed. He absolutely clobbered this five wood. That is through the fairway. That is about a 260 yard five wood. And he stayed in bounds just by about three feet. Was able to hit a six iron from about 190 yards up onto the green. And he's left with a four footer for his par to go one up at a good lag. And he gets it. So from here, Mitch was able to win three straight holes, and then Kirk came back and won two straight holes. It's been a wild match, not a lot of ties. We come to the 15th hole, all square. We take a slow look at this very fine golf swing. It's a nice high cut just down the left side of the fairway with a five wood. Kirk was able to hit this green in two. With two fairway woods, 540 yards, not electing to hit driver off of this tee. Worry about the marsh that is long and right. Mitchell goes ahead and hits his driver. It does set up for his right to left shot shape. This hole does go tough to the left, and you can see it's low and left. Mitchell would find the rough here and have a very difficult downhill lie. He was not able to hit the green, actually. He was not able to hit the green in three, so Kirk was in the driver's seat there, hitting that green in two, two cutting for birdie, and coming away with a one-up lead here on 16, looking at this hole and distracted by a fellow golfer walking behind him. It's the reset button. Going for this green, trying to drive this green with his driver. He's got about 290 yards to the front edge, and he's very agitated there. Very agitated, taken out of his routine. And the door is wide open for Mitchell, hitting his drive. He's looking right at a bunker in the center of the fairway, about 240 yards. And he absolutely clobbered that. Perhaps the momentum is up. For Mitch, I believe he went in that trap. Now Kirk can get near the green, and he has to concede the hole. He was thinking of hitting it up there by the green again and maybe getting out with a five or as a miracle, a four, and put the pressure back on Nick. Mitch is not able to do that. You can see the frustration on Kirk's face as he makes his way to the 17th tee. Each of these players very frustrated today. They've each given up multiple leads throughout the day. Both these players have gone huge runs all day. A lot of birdies, a lot of cars, and good spots to take the match over. There's Mitch on 17, 181 yards, and this looks like a clutch shot that is on the back side. So about 18 feet. Pressure back now on Kirk. This hole is being played straight up. Mitch is not getting a shot here on this hole. Six iron, and he has to stop again. Another golfer walking behind him. He's about to hit his shot. He gets back into his setup, back into his routine. And he comes out of it again. When you're in a match out here for hours concentrating and you get broken like that, you're, it gets very frustrating. Now we move forward to 18 minutes with a one-up lead. Kirk on the green and two. 
Mitch needed to get that on the green and two putt to get out of there. He's not able to do that. He can't get up and down from the bunker. We move to a sudden death playoff. It's tradition on the Love Golf Tour. The sudden death playoff will be selected by the lower seed and Kirk picked Prairie Bluff. And as you see, game time temperature of 46 degrees. It's 7.20 in the morning. As we see, rather beautiful sunrise here. First hole, the 19th hole of this match. And sudden death here. We're getting in a couple of final stretches. And that extra length. He gets ready to put the most important drive in the match. Mitch will be getting one shot here on the 19th hole. There's a fairly straight 418 yard par 4. Kirk just kind of went for a smooth one to make sure he keeps it in play. It looks like it might catch the left side of the fairway or it might just roll into the rough. We'll see what he gets up there. Mitch got here about a half hour before his tee time was able to hit some balls on as the sun was rising this morning. He's ready to go. Wants to advance to this final. So much on the line. Now just down to the southern down. One hole marching to separate these two. And it's been one match and they come out second day of four and Mitch takes a good drive just on the left side should be safe and Kirk's drive just did trickle into the rough he's got about 149 yards he's got himself a nine iron he's lining it up Hard part in the morning here is when the rough is soft and wet like this, and he clips it perfect. As you can see, that ball come out. It comes out actually just a little hot. And it goes about 35 feet past. We'll have that for Birdie and now Mitch. In the driver's seat, about 128 yards. Get on the player's conversation. Mitch apparently missed us to the right as he tells his opponent. Still a chance to get up and down for par. Well, it's just off the front of the surface and it still rolls out. Greens here at Prairie Bluff very fast today. The ball ran out a good 30 feet and it landed in the rough. Now Kirk with a chance for birdie to put some pressure on Mitch to force him to have to make that to extend the match. No chance for Kirk to win this hole if Mitch makes that putt. It'll make it eagle. All he can do is, is, is extend. He has to count on Mitch making that putt and do his best to make this one. The 19th hole. Prairie Bluff Golf Club for the final of the year-long match play on the Love Golf Tour. And here is the birdie putt by Kirk. And it was on the high side. It just stuck out there. He is just a tap in for par. Mitch concedes that to him. Mitch has a putt to advance in the year-long match play. He is for his par net birdie to win the match and move on to the final. And that putt was never high enough. It is on the low side. He looks at go just past. So much pressure. So much pressure to deal with on the first hole. Very unusual situation. This is what builds character, folks. And this is, these are the people who love golf and they're out here at this time of the morning playing a sudden death match as we move to the 20th hole in this match. Which will not be getting a stroke here. It is a 360 yard par four. Kirk is going with his trusty five foot. 
just wants to leave himself a full blood shot into this hole off of the fairway. Very crucial to be in the fairways. We saw how wet that rough was on the first hole. And just a clutch drive. There's this normal little fade right back into the middle of the fairway. Very happy with that tee shot. Mitch is laying back with a three iron. Perhaps the same strategy as he was in the rough on the first hole. He knows how important it is to be in the fairway when the rough is damp like this to get the ball close. He knows a player of Kirk's caliber. The likely stuff is wedge in there. Needs to be in play. Another clutch drive by Mitch. This match has been amazing. These two days have been amazing. These two competitors keep coming through. Either put the pressure on the other or just take a hole away. So Mitch has about 135 yards coming off of this do ring fairway. He's going to go with a pitching wedge, I believe. Let me slow the action down to see how low that ball comes off. He came at low, came low off the face. We see no divot. That ball looked long. Mitch is concerned. It is in that grass behind the hole, behind the green. Now, Kirk is in the driver's seat. He can pretty much smell the final, especially if Mitch is in that deep grass behind the green that you can see there. Kirk is staring this down, clearing out his grooves. Very important at this time of the morning to make sure you have some dry grooves so you don't catch a flyer. I've seen numbers on spin rate go to half. A wet shot with wet grooves. And here is a Love Golf Tour clutch shot alert. This is an A wedge from 118 yards. He is all over it. Almost lands next to the cup. Lands right next to the cup and grabs. Wow. Just to about six feet. That is a clutch shot there from Birdie. Mitch has still not found his second shot. As a good sportsman should, Kirk is over there helping Mitch frantically looking for his ball at a reasonable time. They're doing their best together as a team. This is a gentleman's sport. Kirk obviously doesn't want to win this way, but he does, and Mitch concedes. To the break. And congratulations to Kirk on moving forward year-long match play on the Love Golf Tour. Thanks for watching and keep up to date at thelovegolftour.com and see who wins the year-long match play and follow all the coverage leading up to the Love Golf Tour Championship on October 22nd at the Ruffle Feathers Golf Club. If you're interested in joining the Love Golf Tour, look at the Join the Tour page on thelovegolftour.com. We hope to see more.